I've got the top 10 bottleneck areas of the country, which I'm sure most people won't be surprised at most of them. Probably. Yeah, it's not really um, surprising. In fact, I'm, you know, I'll just kind of whip them out right now. Okay. Um, let's see, by the numbers, blah, 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 blah. Just, you know, I don't want to read it. I just want to give you the top 10. Top 10 bottlenecks. You know, when you're coming into an area and it costs you a lot of time because everybody's in that area, everybody works there, cities, blah, blah, blah. Nashville, number 10, where I-24 and 40 intersect mm -hmm. at I-440 East. Atlanta, number nine. I would have thought Atlanta would have been higher. Do you think maybe because they put the new bypass type of, that, that, that new construction that just finally opened up, that that maybe is why it's down the nine? No, is I was just joking. It's 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 also going to be up in the other rank. Uh, <laughs> number, you psyched me out. <laughs> no, number eight, Houston. That's not a surprise. That's your old stomping grounds. Well, I didn't stomp there, but I lived nearby. Well, you well, I didn't. I didn't say you were. Well, I guess I did say you were a stomper. <laughs> but that's where you used to live in Texas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, did you live back in the day where the killing, when it was the killing fields? Um, you did was, live in that yeah. time, didn't you? It lived, I, um, I, I moved right after like there they was, were found. Like there was, yeah, right. But my, my point though is. I went past there all the time, yeah. Well, the murders were going on while you lived there. Yeah. They only started finding all those bodies there. In Correct. Te Texas City when you were moving out, but mm -hmm. you could have been a victim too. But I think they were, it was, it was older girls and you were just a young kid, weren't you? Um, no, I was in high school. So yeah, you could have been a victim. That's okay. a good thing. Uh, there was one, one of the, my fellow high school, she was a senior. She was a, one of the victims. Believed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was quite a bit of girls. They found in that field. Sad, sad story. Mm -hmm. Um, number seven, Los Angeles. It's understandable. It just, yeah, I just, I guess some of them I'm like surprised are so low. I figured they'd be higher up. Well, it's not even that. You gotta, you gotta realize there's like probably a thousand bottlenecks in the country, if not more. They, these are the top ten. Yeah, and I'm not know? thinking, you know, certain areas like you did with me with Georgia there. Well, number five and six is Atlanta again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number it's not just one street that goes in there like my mind was thinking. Oh, it's just only one road that's bottlenecked in there. It's, yeah. No, this is like coming into the city. Right. Yeah. So my, my mistake. Number four is Houston again. Now, number three and number two is Chicago. And I can testify to that city. Yeah. And I would, I used to tell people I'd rather go to New York City. But Chicago, it was like no matter how you try to get into Chicago, it doesn't matter if you're coming from the south, from the west, or the east. Chicago is is a gigantic bottleneck. And back when I was driving, it was always under construction. Yeah, it was a little worse. Mm, it was crazy. Um, number one, New York City. Hmm. Right there at the GW. I've sat on that GW before. Damn thing moves while you're sitting in that traffic. <laughs> but... uh yeah, there's your top 10. And I, I don't think there's any surprises. You know, Nashville to me, you know, other than that. It, a couple other little tidbits it says here. Texas leads all states with the most number of trucking bottlenecks. Hmm. So Texas has 13 bottlenecks. Meaning, like, you know, obviously we've been in Dallas when Dallas is just backed up. Mm -hmm. So you've got Dallas, Fort Worth. That's just gigantic backups on both sides. Houston. Austin is insane. That I-35 from San Antonio up to Dallas mm -hmm. is just disgusting. It really is. It's like I-95. I-95 from Boston to, to Miami sucks you know that the whole area it's it, just done it, it really just, it <laughs> really does it just does a crap shoot it really is um georgia um says it says georgia follows with nine backups 
Hmm. Yeah, or bottlenecks rather. So Texas has 13 bottlenecks. So you know how like a lot of drivers are like, oh, I hate the Northeast. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you're going to Texas, you're going to probably find more bottlenecks. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, according to this report, mm-hmm. right? And Georgia, nine, nine bottlenecks, right? And I would imagine probably the south side of Atlanta coming on 85 is a bottleneck Mm -hmm. Um, coming down 75 from the top is a bottleneck. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like I said, I 95 is one gigantic bottleneck. So, um, and you, you hear truckers always going, I hate that Northeast man. There's just just crazy traffic up there, man. I hate that place. I ain't going right. And I'm like, okay, but, you realize like it's bad traffic everywhere. They, you know what it really comes. Can I be honest? Like why? Like you know that there's a truckers are supposedly striking right now because Donald Trump was you know With fine. the New York yeah. yeah the New York City thing right. But you know I'm seeing a lot of truckers going nah really you know there's not really a strike going on. Truckers just hate going to New York City because it's a it's a bottleneck. It's a it's a giant bottleneck just like everything else right. So you got to ask yourself. Okay, so really, why do truckers hate New York City and even the, all of the Northeast more than they hate everywhere? Because, honestly, it's bottleneck after bottleneck. I don't care what city you go to. It just sucks when you're coming into cities. So here's my guess. There's no parking in no, any cities. There's, you can't find, you know, truckers that live in the cities can't find parking. There's crime in every city. We already know that. Memphis was like number one. Tulsa and Memphis and Miami, they were huge for crimes against truckers more than New York. So you got to ask, so why do truckers hate New York? If if New York City is, okay, we have, the, it's the number one bottleneck, but that's on the GW. That's just I-95, okay? So, because, you know, to be honest with you, getting in and out of New York City is a lot easier, I think, because there's 5 million ways in and out. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of bridges. There's all right. kind of ways. Um, now, the tolls are insane. So, so I would say that would be more of a number one. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think, personally, my two real reasons I think New York City is bad is because all your crime movies are made in New York City. <laughs> all the mafia movies, huh? Yeah. Like when you <laughs> see, like, the mo- remember growing up movie, Warriors mm-hmm. come out and play. Mm-hmm. Warriors, remember that? I mean, yeah. and so everybody thinks like, "Oh my gosh, there's so many gangs in New York." L.A.'s more famous. Yeah, that's for also ga- a name of a movie. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, gangs in New York. No, but you know, um, the uh, L.A. area that's more notice notorious for gangs. Yeah. So you know, why do truckers hate New York City over the rest of the country? And one time I was in Indiana when I worked for that company. In Richmond, and they said to me, "That we, company, we got to ask you a question. Why is everybody in the Northeast so rude?" <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the it's our accent. You know, I'm originally from the Northeast in Pennsylvania, so I believe it's it's the rudeness that comes from the Northeast that people literally don't want to go there. People. If you're from the Northeast, you're used to the people in the Northeast, and you don't really think anything of it. But, you know, and people used to say to me when I was a young trucker, they'd be like, man, you're crazy, because that's all I used to do is Northeast, right? Mm-hmm. And they used to tell me that there's a better, a bigger world out there. And then I started going over the road, and I was like, oh, so this is why they hate the Northeast. Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, like, you go into a diner in the South, everybody's like, how y'all doing? I'll be right with you there, sugar. Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, baby. You want some pancakes there? You know, I mean, I mean honestly, they're nice. And you go into, the, like, the Northeast, they're like, you know, I'll be with you in a second. <laughs> you know, you, you want some mustard with that pretzel. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and and the way they talk, like even I despise New York accents. Mm-hmm. Like people, like sometimes they think I'm from New York, but I'm not. But when you like when you're from Pennsylvania, you know the difference between Pennsylvania and New Jersey and New York. Mm-hmm. And New York is rude, and so is Boston. You know what I mean? And so I literally can understand, and I think the real reason truckers hate New York. And the whole Northeast. It's not the traffic. Okay, come on. We just read Texas has more bottlenecks than any state. Okay, Georgia's number two. Southern states. All right. 
it's got to be the accent and their rudeness. That's just my take on it. What do you think? I, I can I can understand it because when you talk to some, you know, the city of New York, because upstate New York's gorgeous, but when you talk to people that are in the city area right. and they're talking to you, men and women, they have this abrupt wording. Obnoxious. Abrupt. You know, when they're talking, it's like their words are ending really quick. What's up? Yeah, you know, it, duh, it, duh, 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 right. duh. they're very blunt. You know, it's not yeah. that they're, it's the way they're coming across, but they could be really sweet. I mean, we know some New Yorkers and you could talk to them and they're, it's just, it's the accent and it will come off where it's like, whoa, back up. You just totally threw your words into my personal space type of thing. You know, like, listen, I want I, to talk to you about something. Yeah. It, ex- I, you know what I mean? You, it's, it's just, it's, a, ooh. It, exactly. It's, it's, it's the, the Southern accent is soft. How y'all doing? It's right. the bells. Right. Now listen to this. <laughs> hey, baby, how y'all doing? Right. That sounds sweet. It really does. Right. I don't know. Sweet coming from a guy okay. saying it sounds kind of creepy, but you no. know, I got your point. <laughs> but now listen to this. Okay. Yo, what's up? Yeah, see, I, I, I get it. You know I what I mean? It. It's it's I get it too. Yeah. Honestly. I sat down at a restaurant one time. This one dude was running behind me, right? And mm-hmm. I forget where we went in to eat. I think it was in Connecticut or something, you know, at the truck stop there. And um we you know, I was just talking to people, right? Like the waitress she's like, she's she's talks and I was talking back and and she was, you know, getting gonna get you know, stuff for us. Communicating. And the driver, he was from like Alabama or something that I was, you know, he, that was, we were running together and he's like, oh man, do you think she's going to spit in our food or something? I go, why? He goes, weren't you just arguing? I go, <laughs> I go no. I just, why, why, why did you think we were arguing? <laughs> you know? so, and then, so when I was in, in Indiana and that trucking company, the secretaries, they're like, um, why are people from the Northeast so rude? That's exactly because they're used to dealing with, you know, people getting freight, you know, booking freight over there. And so she was like, why is everybody so rude there? And I thought about it and I, and I said, you know, I bet I know, you know, it, there was at the time like 310 million people in the United States. But if you look at air miles from Boston to Richmond, there's 150 million people. From I'm serious, really, from Boston all the way down to that area, you probably have like around 150, just the East Coast alone. So the Northeast, people are living on top of each other like rats. And so I said to her, I said, let me ask you a question. You're walking down the street and someone says, hey, how you doing? What do you say back? She goes, I say, hey, what's going on? How are you doing today? I said, exactly. I said, when someone says hi to you in New York or New Jersey, you grab your wallet <laughs> and you say, piss off. <laughs> I said, because honestly, that's the truth. If like, if you go into big cities, like especially New York City, you know, everybody knows don't act like a tourist. Mm-hmm. They spot you a million miles away. There's scammers everywhere. So I think it's really the crime might be a little, you know, and the accent mm-hmm. and the attitude i think the accent and attitude does it so there's my take on the northeast i i agree with you there i agree yeah the cool. accent and just the uh. yeah the, the blunt force talking right. how you doing exactly it's just very abrupt it's just, yeah. uh. you gotta love to 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 love a new yorker you got to get to know them mm-hmm. honestly you really you really do if you if you listen to them long enough they're not bad no really no okay moving on Moving on. Moving on. So there's your top 10 bottlenecks plus. Oh, you know what? Um, I wanted to just mention one other thing real quick. Um, so I said Georgia had 13, um, or Georgia had nine, nine mm-hmm. Cal- or I can't even talk. Texas had 13. Georgia mm-hmm. had nine. California has eight. Tennessee has seven backups. Illinois and Washington both have six. So those states are are filled with backups if you want to go where there's no backups you need to go to wyoming or something or the northeast where there was none where there's no people (laughs) (laughs) that's true go up in the mountains yeah so moving on moving on okay i kind of drugged that out a little bit it's okay um well you know what by the time they get this podcast we'll already be at the show in florida Mm -hmm. so no sense in mentioning it like i just did but uh just real quick you have the booth for louisville 
6105. Please stop in and see Talk CDL out there. And again, I'm going to mention in each podcast, we have free VIP tickets. They are worth about $99, $100 bucks a piece. They're free to you drivers. All you got to do is write to us. People have been writing to us. We've given out quite a bit mm-hmm. of tickets. Um, and these tickets not only get you into the complex to be in, you know, where uh, the the, uh, the fun stuff exhibitors are at, but it also gets you into like, I don't know if Shania Twain or Alabama or whoever's playing this year. It's all free with your VIP tickets. Yeah, Ruth Ann, you're looking at me like, what are you talking about? I know there's a concert, but it's not, not Shania. R- Ruth Ann. <laughs> just laughing at you. Ruth Ann, I'm telling you, they have stars that big. I know, but I looked at it. I don't remember what his name is, but it is a guy. Well, okay. Well, I'm just saying I used Shania as an example. I know. That's why I was laughing. All right. But anyways, moving on. Moving on. Um, I'm going to call Shania. <laughs> you don't think that Troy might have liked Shania when she was big, right? I, I did like her music. I, I know. I'm not going to uh, deny that. You know, but I feel like a woman. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I got a question. Yeah. If you were in a truck that was overloaded, like they, they, they overloaded you. Mm-hmm. And you are going down the street, and you're in an accident. So I accept the load, mm-hmm. and I get into an accident. Mm-hmm. Whose fault's the accident? Well, that's what I'm asking. Do you know? I'm posing that question. See, I know because well, I read the article. I know if somebody ran into me, it would be their fault. I know if I ran into them, it's my fault. Well, I mean, think about it this way: it's it's first of all, you're supposed to know what you, you're as far as being overweight. You're as a driver. You're not supposed to take things that are overweight and all that other stuff. And there are circumstances where you end up doing that as a driver. You're like, okay, whatever. I'm overweight, but I got I'm just going to get it and get it there. But they never really think of the consequences if there's an accident and someone's injured or there's property damage or something like that. And I thought it would be kind of smart right now because I read the article to let drivers know what and who is responsible when that happens. Go ahead and read the article to us. So when a semi-truck crashes due to overloading, it can result in major injuries, property damage, and fatalities. Who can you sue or who is the liable parties for those damages? The trucking company is number one. The trucking company that owns the vehicle and employs the driver is often the primary party responsible for ensuring compliance with cargo weight limits. So they can be held responsible when the truck is overloaded or failed to maintain the truck properly. Um, But the second person could be the driver. Because if you knew your truck was overloaded and then you left with it overloaded and um, had an accident such as driving recklessly that contributed to the accident, you also can be held responsible then for that. Well, I noticed... The article you read started out with the accident is due to the overload. So if the overload is the cause of the accident, okay, if that's the main contributing factor, Mm -hmm. then I agree with you, you know. And yes, most, obviously, a lawyer, who do you think he's going after, the trucker? Or do you think he's going after the company? He's going to go after the company. Now, if somebody gets really hurt or killed and it was the trucker's fault, and like you said, maybe he was recklessly driving and due to the overload, prosecutors are going to go after the trucker. So Mm -hmm. the trucker can be not only held liable for some money, but he could also see some jail time. Right. I mean, that's and that's what I... Sometimes people always like to just blame the the company or the shipper and loaders or certain other things, it's not always those cases or it's not just the driver's fault sometimes that it can actually go right back to the loaders, the shippers. They can be fault, find at fault for overloading a tractor too at some, well, not the tractor, but the trailer at times also. I mean, it really can go down to even maintenance if they're not maintaining the truck properly. Well, you know, it can also be said for anything the trucker accepts Mm -hmm. like for example he gets dispatched and and it's icy out and he takes the load and goes down the road and and wrecks in the ice a truck driver can be held liable for that because he should have been off the road right okay same with a overweight vehicle you know and and i'm telling you it does it does happen where truckers end up getting in trouble 
for taking it. And a lot of times the truck driver, though, is kind of pressured by the company. And I'll tell you who pressures truckers more is your smaller companies. Your bigger companies are really starting to learn that, hey, if a driver says it's unsafe or, hey, I'm not driving this overweight truck, a lot of your bigger companies are like, no problem, let's get it taken care of because Mm -hmm. they know and they've dealt with lawsuits. It's your one truck chuck companies, you know what I mean, five trucks, ten trucks, where the owner or he has one dispatcher and they're just trying to make money and they start threatening the truck driver. Mm-hmm. Okay. That does that crap does happen quite a bit. And so I'll tell you the problem is if you're a trucker and you're making really good money with that company, it's easier for them to pressure you. Hey, right. I can get somebody else. You know what I mean? You're mm-hmm. fired if you don't take it. Exactly. You know, that type of, of stuff. Okay, it's, uh, it's it's too heavy. Okay, well, let me give you a route to get around the scales. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, like, there you are trying to duck the scales, and you, you end up, like you said, into an accident due to, like, for example, if you're overloaded and your brakes are, you know, just passing, mm-hmm. and you come up on a stop sign or a red light and you can't stop because you're 10, 15,000 over. Mm-hmm. I've seen guys grossing over a hundred thousand. Okay. And guess what? You don't stop the same with a hundred thousand as you do 80,000. Correct. So yeah, I agree with you. That's a, a good article and people drivers should know that. Don't let anybody bully you into taking a load. It isn't, I can tell you right now, the day you take a load that's overweight and you get into an accident because remember this is saying because of the overweight, all right. The, that day, if you hurt somebody bad enough or kill them, your career's over. So you, you're better off when a, a small company says, hey, take it or lose your job. You're better off saying, well, hey, I know you can't see me, but I have my middle finger up. I'm out of here. Come pick your truck up. You really are better off doing that. I would. You, you got a way better chance of getting a job telling some company to go to hell because of un, you know unsafe acts versus you being liable for the accident. Right. And that's the thing is it's, it's, it's not worth your career and it's very hard for some drivers to accept that because, you know, they might be, have a shady work history and they're trying to straighten it up now and, or something to that effect. And, and they're trying to make it something better for themselves. But the company that, that took them is the shady company trying to now, like you said, bully them. It's, it's, it's a difficult situation, but Really, you got to think about what's the wisest choice and the wisest way to get out of that situation than to just take it and take a chance. Uh, the only the, the advice I would always give people in this situation is always weigh the cost. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's the better outcome for you and your family and the public safety? Mm-hmm. Always weigh that. Do the right thing. Pray Correct. about it. All right. Moving on. Moving hey, on. Hey, let's take a break. If you're a driver looking for a new trucking job, check out NCI. NCI offers the following. New Kenworth T680s, competitive wages, solo team, and students welcome, plus a full benefit package for you and your family. Check them out today at 888-311-7076. That's 888-7076. And tell them TalkCDL sent you. Hey drivers, are you sick of watching the other drivers bypass the way station while you are held up going through yourself? Well, download DriveWise today at www.drivewise.com. That's D-R-I-V-E-W-Y-Z-E.com and start bypassing the scales yourself. If you're a small carrier, an owner-operator, or even a big fleet looking for something better, check out DriveWise today. And remember, there's no equipment, no transponders needed when you're using DriveWise. Check them out for a free download at www.drivewyze.com. Drivers, if you're looking for a local, home, everyday driving job, apply with Carter Lumber today. They have positions for Class A and Class B local drivers. They can take experienced drivers, students, and non-CDL drivers. With over 160 locations, chances are they have a position for you. 
So go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL and apply today. Again, that's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Thank you. Truck Parking Club is a network of instantly reservable daily and monthly truck parking locations throughout the U.S. Truck Parking Club helps connect truckers to truck parking locations throughout the U.S. via truckparkingclub.com. Our networks is made up of property owners that have locations adequate for truck parking to list on the platform. This includes trucking companies, storage companies, CDL schools, trailer leasing companies, real estate investors, truck parking operators, and more. Go to truckparkingclub.com today. We are back. I don't want to celebrate, but I am seeing, you know, for the last year we've been talking about how crappy the industry is in freight and blah, blah, blah. I'm seeing an uptick right now in freight. Mm-hmm. I am. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing trucking companies getting orders and that's due. And don't let anybody tell you that's because of election year. I don't buy that. I'm going to tell you right now, we've just gone through some crappy times. And I've been predicting 2024. Lord willing, it's going to get better. Okay, but I mean, and we're only in February and I'm seeing more freight. A lot of trucking companies that I know are getting orders, a good size orders. And so they're, you know, getting dedicated runs and all this other stuff. And so you could see the job market picking up a little better for truckers right now. So... Um, again, not celebrating. I say we just sit back and watch, but I think it's already better this month than it was this time last year. I think so also. I think we're, we're definitely going up on the, we're doing a nice climb up that hill now and getting ourselves out of the crappy situation that, that the economy's been in. I'm telling you, these truck drivers have really taken a beating. Yeah. Okay. Really, honestly, they've taken a beating in money. Um, and you know, obviously forced to take jobs that they don't want seriously. And, and, you know, it's been what we call survival mode Mm -hmm. and some of them are doing what they should do. You know what I mean? They're like, you know what, you know, some of them, for example, there's drivers out there that have taken jobs where they're gone two, three, four weeks at a time. And really they want to be home every week. Okay. And those jobs, you know, in the last year or two are, really not there unless it's a horrible pay- paying job. So some of them have sacrificed just to pay for their, you know, keep, take care of their families and, and they've gone out there and they're over the road and, and we know what's going to happen soon as freight's picking up and the job market gets better and you have more orders and manufacturing going on in certain areas that is going to bring back a lot of your local home every day and home every weekend jobs and drivers will start shifting to those jobs more and more as they pick up. That's a guarantee. Right. Right. I agree. So anyways, um, so anyways, again, don't, don't celebrate and don't go getting on the CB. If you have a CB, get a CB, get a CB, get a CB. But when you do, don't get on the CB and say, Troy said it's all better now. No, we're all, but get on the CB because there are a lot of, of ice accidents going on too. I seen them. Well, I'm glad Troy told us it's better. (laughs) He's so smart. He said it's better. (laughs) It's better now. All right, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. I'll tell you what, it's been a chilly. I'll tell you what, if you're a trucker looking to come to Florida. Don't. Well, you can. <laughs> now, I don't mean move, but like if you're trying to get a load down here to get some good weather, we've had some. Ni- we've had nothing but 30-degree mornings. I'm telling you. It's, it's been, been icy. I mean, I was just looking to see what the temp is right now, and it's 75, but it, didn't t- it took a long time to get to 75 today. Well, you just blew that thought away. <laughs> <laughs> They're going at 75. Oh, you're really chilly down there. But no, seriously, Florida's been crazy. Like, the hunting's been better because, you know, the the hogs move around more in the cold. But I'm telling you, it's it's been 30s, in the 30s here in Florida. So, you know, I've, I've often said, can you imagine the guy, the, the family, that they, they save up 10 grand and they book like the Disney Lodge, you know what I mean? The big experience. Mm-hmm. And they fly in from Minnesota or 
or, you know, New England or something really in the frozen tundra up there. Mm -hmm. And they're like, all right, kids, get your bathing suits out. We're going to Florida. And then they get here and they get off the plane and it's like 25 degrees. And they're like, it was, you know, you laughed at me this morning. I let the dogs out and I come walking in on a blanket wrapped around me and you go, why do you have a blanket on you? I said, it's cold out. Yeah. It was 32 degrees outside this morning and letting the dogs out. So it's, 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 it's like a crapshoot. You know what I mean? You're coming to Florida hoping for good weather and, and you get the cold. So anyways, no worries. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Um, real quick, I just wanted to mention, I read an article earlier about this county, this, this um, neighborhood, right? residence area uh, where a lot of truckers live. It's in West Palm Beach County, right, in Florida. And this is honestly, truly, it makes me sick. For many years, truckers actually moved into these areas because it's unforced ordinances where a trucker can park his semi ah, in his driveway. Right. He could park in his driveway or on the road, right? Mm-hmm. And, and in fact, they say... This area is an abundance of truckers that moved out into this area. I guess it's more country area where this is at mm. in, a, in this community. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I guess, believe it or not, nobody cared. Everybody was cool, you know. And I guess a couple, couple new people, <laughs> I think from the Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. No, I'm not joking when I say this. They move into the re- area and they start whining to the to the commission and all the people that these truckers are making our neighborhoods worth less money, right? Like they're it, it looks trashy with semi trucks there and they devalue our property. Now this was had nothing to do with people that have been living there for like 10, 20 years. It was all people that moved in last year. And I, I guess again, I don't know if it's a New Yorker. You know, <laughs> but they, they, these people move in and they start whining. And so they start, I guess, fining and kicking truckers out because this of an ordinance that was from decades ago, right? Of trucks over 12,000, they upped it to 16,000. And we know most semi trucks are probably, you know, usually 17, five to 20,000 pounds, you know, the uh, actual bobtail. And so what, but the gist of it is the mayor or one of them were like, "Uh uh-oh, because of this happening for 20 years, these truckers are probably going to have a loophole and they're about to decide on it. And now the city is probably going to have to pay the truckers, which I'm like, yeah, good, man. And, and find those clowns that, listen, if you move into a neighborhood, and I don't care if you're from New York or if you're from Alabama, if you move into a, a, a neighborhood, whether it's in Florida or, or Washington or wherever you move to, and you're the newbie there and there's people living their life the way they've always lived it, and you don't like it? Well, guess what? It's not the place for you. Exactly. You're not wanted there. If, you know, it's, it's, there's the saying, when everything's going smooth and no one's complaining, no one's having any issues, everyone gets along and then someone comes in and they're starting to be bickering, who do you think started the bickering? Always the new guy. All good things must come to an end. That's what it, that's the end. It's so true. It's like everybody's getting along. You got a bunch of truckers in the neighborhood and, and I don't see a semi truck making the neighborhood look bad, especially no. if you've got a lot of Chrome on there, baby. That's, <laughs> that, that's curb appeal to me. I'm just saying it, right. r- it really is, man. Most truckers, when they have their, if you bring your bobtail to the house, most truckers are probably out there on a the weekend, maybe giving it a nice bath. You know what I mean? I know. That, but honestly, how many times are those truckers home? Come on, they're man. in West Palm. That's a that, that's a good that's another good observation. How often do the truckers actually come home? Come on, guys! If you're moving into a neighborhood, before you move into that neighborhood, you need to go in there. Hey, before we moved into this neighborhood, I literally came in here and I parked my vehicle at night just to see if there's like rowdiness or anything like that. I wanted to see, and it was nice and peace and quiet. And I mo- and we moved in. This was years ago I, I advise that to anybody but don't move into the neighborhood and become the neighborhood jackass or the one nobody likes come on guys it's true i'm serious it's true you know what if i was the truckers 
I'd be starting my truck up at about 4 a.m. <laughs> and I'd park it out front of that guy's house because I'm sure everybody knows who it is. I don't know who it is, but I'm sure they... You always, you always knew who the new person is. In everybody the knows who the <laughs> whiner is, too, in your neighbor. Yeah. The guy that calls the cops for every little thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm serious. That's yeah. the guy, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, you, do, you, do you just get near my property there? Don't you dare. Don't you look at my property. You know, honestly, truly, guys, take a chill pill. I mean, seriously. You know what they? You know what that those those clowny, whiny neighbors need to do? Seriously, they need to go knock on the trucker's door and see if the trucker will take them out in the road for a week, so that they can literally see what we go through as truck drivers. And maybe they would appreciate, okay, the guy that's actually bringing the stuff that they eat and 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 wear and everything else. Maybe they'd find another new pre- appreciate. Remember uh, back in the day when if you started working for a trucking company, I didn't care if you were a secretary or whatever. Back in the day, they made you go out on the road at least for one trip. Yeah, they wanted you to see what it's like. Absolutely. If you didn't know anything about trucking, your ass was getting in a semi truck for at least a one run and you were going to at least see what these guys see. And they get to see cars cutting them off. They get to see all kind of garbage out on the road. And guess what? Everybody got, they develop a new appreciation for what it's like to be in a big truck and have a bunch of four wheelers around you and traffic and all kinds of BS. And most people end up changing their attitude towards truckers once they get in that truck for a little bit. It's the truth. It is the truth. Yes, it is. Anyways, Ruthann, that's my podcast for the week. Come see us at Louisville. You got the word of the day? I do. By word genius? By word genius. Super fishies. A super fish? Super fishies. Super fishies? Super fishies. Super fishies. Mm-hmm. Is it is it mean what it sounds like it means? No, it, I, I honestly this one I didn't. You know, know. what I was? No, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I thought of. Okay. Because you know I fish in the Gulf a lot, mm-hmm. and I've seen flying fish, not as much here in the Gulf as you see in other areas. Mm-hmm. So I I picture when you said super fishy, I'm thinking of like this fish coming out of the water and flying. <laughs> You know, I'm serious because I've seen flying fish before. You know, they just kind of sail a little bit. Was yeah. it, was it, the one, the one um, up at the Withlacoochee, the sturgeons, they just go and people just like they land in their trucks when they're. That's the Swanee. Well, whatever they're, it was. Well, they're in the Swanee River. Swanee. Yeah. It's a river. It's what? black. It's yucky. It's not yucky. The Swanee River's clean. It's not yucky. I'm just used to where it meets the spring water and it turns brackish. Yeah. Like the, What's a super fishy? A super fishy is a surface. Or another way, if you want to talk about literally, literary, um, an outward part or appearance. So the sculptor created a super fishies that seemed so realistic you would expect the marble body to be warm to the touch. While he exhibited an uncaring super fishies in public, he was very sensitive with people in their private life. That was definitely an interesting see, word of the day. I knew it. Super fishies. Yep, the surface. All right. Come see us at Louisville. Peace. We're out of here. Peace. Praise the Lord.